<laughs> yeah, yo. Woke up in the morning and to God be the glory. Uh. Thankful for another day to tell my story. Put my opinions in the universe and let them orbit. I'm from the dirty south with a dirty mouth, might need orbit. Miss thing things on me like a nigga Norbit. Had to refuse them cause my bitch no resolution, she gorgeous. As I dab my sons up and kiss my daughter forehead. Tell them we gon' get this money till my pockets more bit. Remember living in apartments, now we playing mortgage. You ain't gotta like a nigga regardless, baby, I'm blessed. And I keep that blick with me, we like grits and eggs. As you sip your coffee, flick your cigarette and let a nigga vent. Yeah. We back. Mm. Uh. Oh, we back. Chris and Ed's podcast, episode 29. I'm your host, Deontay Cobb, but guess who's behind the camera? Big Ice Cup Cat! Yeah, Big Ice Chain! <laughs> we got homie Shaderic in this bitch. Um, guys, goddamn, we can't enjoy Labor Day? Flooding my... First of all, the comments, I expected that. The DMs, that's fine. I ain't know y'all was gonna be in the emails. Nigga, where's the pod? Where's the pod? <laughs> we, had to, we was outside. We was outside, me and Big Ice Cup, poolside, on that Julio. <laughs> hey, bro, what that what that Julio was hitting on? I was asleep by twelve o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> bottles and bottles, man. Uh, I, I think we. I, I said some Don White, Don Reposado, Duce, Hennessy. <laughs> he was going crazy. Not nice like this. <laughs> My liver was beatboxing. <laughs> <laughs> My shit was Bismarck Key. Um, as always, <laughs> as y'all know, shoot me an email, grissonxpod at gmail.com. Or you can hit me on the line. Questions, calls, concerns. Oh, no, don't do that. That shit fucked up for some reason. I don't know what happened, but uh, somebody hit me up. I tried to get in touch with support. They still ain't fixed the shit. We're going we gonna to figure something else out. We're going to get away from that bootleg-ass company anyway. So, we're going we're gonna to chill on the line, but we're going to keep the same number. I just got to get that shit figured out. Give me a week. But we back. Okay? And then we be back, and then we be back. And, and when Thanksgiving come, let niggas eat. All right? We're going to be a family. We're going to be drinking on that Gullah Gullah. Christmas time. New Year's. The, the same? When y'all take a break off work, we take a break, too. Club Shay Shay Podcast. Now, listen. I've been a harsh critic of Club Shay Shay Podcast. This was a redemption. We got Marlon Wayne's in the building. After that back and forth with DJ Vlad, first of all, fuck DJ Vlad. All right? We're not doing that shit. I be mad when I see Tony Yayo up there. I be mad when I see anybody black out there, up there after uh, Godfrey and what? Who? who Godfrey and um, Lord Jamar took their stand because of um, his comments on Farrakhan. Hey, hey, we... we <laughs> We need to we need to erase uh, DJ Vlad out of the black subconscious. That he just he needs to go into the ether. He shouldn't even exist anymore. But telling Marlon Wayne's literal Hollywood royalty that he ain't worth forty k because you don't oh your interview did this number did what's the numbers look like now? What, what let's just, let's just check it out now. Shit, it was two, it was two million in twenty four hours, three point three in three days. 3.3 million three days. Yeah, 3.3 million three days. They done made they done made 40k. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that man, man. Pay him. He he was worth it. But this is the thing, bro. This is when you let white people in these culture vultures tell you what your value is. But see, the thing is, the Wayne's family been fighting that since the late 80s. It's the host, Deontay Kyle. Who behind the camera? Big cat. Hey, look, a lot of people have been asking, like, how can they contribute? I haven't responded because, you know, we're just doing our thing. You feel me? Like, this setup works. But there are things that can be added to make things better. So, dollar sign Grits and Eggs podcast is our cash app if you want to send donations. The goal is this. Now, Big Cat is behind the camera because this isn't a continual camera. Every 11 minutes, he got to restart it. And that's why we got the B-cam. You feel me? So, we're trying to get a continual cam. We're trying to get an Apple laptop so we can still use the same program that we use to record this and get an interface so Big Cat can get a mic. We got a guy producing. We got an editor. We're going to have this shit right. So, if you want to contribute, dollar sign Gris and Eggs podcast 
I don't care if you send a dollar. It really don't matter. We're going to get this shit regardless. But a lot of people have been asking to contribute, and your contributions would help. Appreciate you. Message. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the interview, it started out really heavy at the top. You know what I'm saying? Uh, with him talking about his family, talking about losing his parents. But he speaks with his family in such a deep reverence. Um, he speaks so highly of his siblings, so highly of his parents. I mean, the first 30 minutes was, that was like heart wrenching. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was, it was like captivating, but it's like emotional as hell. You know what I'm saying? You can feel like the energy in that bitch. And I do like when um, Shannon Sharp does these interviews with people and he just let them go. Especially somebody like um, like a Marlon Wayans who just, he got stories on story. I mean, he's Hollywood royalty, bro. The Wayans family is Hollywood royalty. They need, they, they, first of all, him, Marlon, Marlon, Sean, Damon, and Keenan separately could all get Lifetime Achievement Awards, right? Keenan Ivory Wayans definitely deserves something for the path that he blazed for his family. But the Wayans family as a collective. And everybody that come under that, we got started with Keenan Ivory Wayans. Them people need a lifetime achievement award. We need to celebrate that family. BET need to be celebrating that family. First of all, we need to get Stevie Wonder a lifetime achievement award while he's still here. Because y'all love to wait until somebody died to celebrate him. Um, we lifetime achievement award for Stevie Wonder. The year after that, we need to celebrate that entire Wayans family. And everybody that they put on. I mean, you got Keenan Ivory Wayne in tandem with Robert Townsend, David Allen Greer, Jamie Foxx, Jim Carrey, Rosie Perez, Jennifer Lopez, Sean and Marlon, Damon, Kim, his uh, uh, Damon Damon Jr., Tommy Davidson. Well, let's uh, not forget he gave Terry Crews the biggest role of his career. Terry on White, on on white, white Chick. Chick. Yeah. And and his, having his pen, he had his pen on Keenan Ivory had his pen on damn near everything late eighties. Everything they did was damn near classic. Everything. Major, major pain? Man, tell me when tell me in the end when um, when Shorty went Orlando uh was Orlando Brown yeah. went Do it, do it, go talk, do it. Come on, you wasn't you wasn't watching USA? You wasn't watching USA at home dancing, acting like you had a gun, flipping that bitch in the air, three three. You went on that. Funniest movies. Don't be a man. It's one of the funniest movies of all time. Message. Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Put hot sauce on this bitch. Wrong hole, fool. The hot dog is funny. Wrong hole, fool. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them two freaks get busy on the dance floor. <laughs> what the knowledge in the books? In the gap. <laughs> Excuse me, my black sister. Can you tap that white girl on the shoulders? <laughs> my milk of magnesia. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I was jumping in the nigga. Nah, Perfect nah. dismount. <laughs> I give it a 10. I give it a 10. <laughs> Stump that nigga literally flat. The man daddy was younger than him. <laughs> because because that was always super critical of the black image in Hollywood. And they like all these gangster movies that was coming out was Hype, it's just hyper violence. Like you got niggas like old dog just m murder niggas watching the tape with the homies and all this. And it's not the thing is is that anything that can be imagined can be done. It's not out the realm of possibility. But if the scope that you have in media is so small and largely controlled by white dollars. And when black people take on decide to make their own movement, take on the narrative, narratives, they feed into harmful stereotypes. You know, welfare queens, niggas just being thugs, drinking forties, and and killing each other, like all this gang banging shit. Even if it is a reality, the choice to continually spotlight some of the worst situations in our communities, it, it ruins our image when we don't represent our when we don't represent ourselves in media largely, especially. When the music is coinciding with it. So they always took control of the black narrative. They made satire out of all that shit that was going on. Made light of it. Made fun of it. But made it ludicrous and ridiculous to show you like. It is a little ludicrous. It is ridiculous. And they dropped some gems while they was doing it. Um, But Kenny Ivory Wayne's. I mean he just put on his entire family. He had, he got his hand, I, I, think about everybody that come out uh, up under him and everything they've done. 
like Jim Carrey said, basically he owed his whole career to King of Ivory Wayans and the Wayans family. Because without In Living Color, we don't know him. You telling me you would never want to watch Ace Ventura? You never want to watch Dumb and Dumber? Come on, bro. Liar, liar. What would we be without the Truman Show? Come on, bro. Like, those things is accredited. You got to get your start somewhere. That's that's Hollywood royalty. That family is Hollywood royalty, bro. <laughs> it's like, you ain't never been in a shower? Seen the sub side? Go down the crack of a nigga. <laughs> Two pick. Ice pick. Ice, ice pick. Now it's two pick. It was two pick. Two pick. It was two pick. It was two pick. Yeah. <laughs> Niggas are handing their shanks, huh? Keep it down. Keep it down. Keep it down. Barbecue. What are you doing? Hmm. Hey, you said you've been in jail five years now, fool. <laughs> Niggas <is> free. <laughs> Nigga, <laughs> Nigga been free. Nigga, it's a two slide. <laughs> He probably wasn't even in jail that long. <laughs> That's only <what we've> been. <laughs> that nigga probably did like a probation violation, did 90 days. <laughs> man, that was a funny ass movie, bro. Them folks had some shit, man. But then, uh, I mean, and I want to talk about Marlon outside of the interview. Man, when Marlon gets in a dramatic role, like how he wasn't like Rec Room for a Dream, or like, um, what's the shit? Bel-Air? What with Beyonce Be- Bel Air, wasn't he in the shit with Beyonce Jennifer Hudson? That one night only shit. One night mm-hmm. only. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh. It was Dream yeah, Girls. Dream Girls. Dream yeah, Girls. Yeah, Dream- yeah, Mur- 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 yeah, yeah bro. Th- when the man get in a dramatic role, he really go crazy. Above the rim. Above the rim. Also, if you ever wow. seen his, if you ever seen his, um, his his audition tape for Richard Pryor, he smoked that shit. I ain't, you know. Stand up is subjective, so like, what's funny to some people ain't gonna be funny to others. But the family itself has just always been a funny family. Always put out classic, classic movies. Damon Williams is in a league of his own. Mo Money is hilarious. Blank Man is hilarious. G5. 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 It's a funny family, bro. And everybody funny, man. That's just. You know, Kim, it's, it's man, we need to get a Wayne's family's day flowers. We're going to get a Wayne's family's day flowers for keeping it funny, for keeping it black. Facts. And speaking of keeping it black, shop coffee black. See, round around here with the Dunkin' Donuts. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. America runs on Dunkin'. Fuck that! <laughs> <laughs> Support the brother, man, not the other man. Message. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, rest in peace, Rich Homie Quan, man. Oh man. Um, it's still alleged that he got a bad pill, but I think the general consensus is that he did overdose, and I believe it was a day before his birthday, so a day before he turned twenty-five. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Um, man. Um, I'll never stop going in. Mm. Shape me. Mm. Sold a lot of mid to that. Mm. Huh? Had the gas too. I'm a future nigga. I see your pal. Who the fuck told you I want to be your ass? Yeah, hey, I mean, <laughs> rich, rich homie, man. Rich gang was a time when him and Thug was. And it's crazy because shit, Thug on trial, rich homie just died. Being a millennial is rough. Mm. We've been through it all. Life is rough on the millennial. <laughs> Ever since the motherfucking planes hit that top, nigga, ever since Chris Jericho came out, <laughs> break the walls down! They literally broke the walls down. It's been non-stop. It's been, one, it's been non-stop fuckery, extortion, <laughs> robbery, extortion, and all types of fuckery! <laughs> it's been non-stop. It has been non-stop. It's been non-stop. We had two great depressions. Bruh. We're immune to it now. Bro, listen, listen, bro. The president, <laughs> the a, 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 a former president, and now uh, in the running to be a president, almost got dome shot it, and niggas was stop talking about it after three days. We just didn't care. <laughs> 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 niggas is like <laughs> small potatoes, man. <laughs> That's not the man. Bees are there bees? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, this big, we almost seen a nigga get his shit splattered. On national TV. On national TV. And we didn't give a fuck. We don't care. We don't care. We 
don't care. <laughs> Then y'all wonder why, like, y'all be saying, oh, when somebody dies, it's fake love. Bruh, it's so much going on. When somebody dies, we just hit the brakes. Like, God, rich homie? Yeah. Rich homie? The first person that said something to me, I called him a liar. I said, why are you, why are you playing on my phone? He said something. I was like, I'm ignoring that. Because he made you made a post. I was like, mm, I'm not paying attention to that. Niggas would be saying, rich homie. Not rich homie. Why? Why would Rich Homie just die? Mama Sita, Sita, Sita. Y'all remember him and uh, Thug was on that shit with uh, Travis, Travis Scott? I remember that. Tell me if I don't knock, had the vibrator on me like a beeper. Hmm. I don't mean Colorado, smoke California brief. Man, that shit hard. Right, y'all sleep. We got to play that after. We ain't, you know, we ain't getting no more copyright. We ain't getting no more copyright. We ain't getting no more copyright. Y'all niggas wasn't deep in the Rich Gang bag like me, man. Y'all wasn't listening to Milk Marie. I, listen, that was <laughs> really, <man>. I know. <laughs> listen, man, being a millennial, man, it just, you just immune. We immune. And our babies, hey, all these people, y'all talking about young niggas? <laughs> them our kids. <laughs> <laughs> we raised them. <niggas. laughs> now, listen, now, listen, we did have a serious conversation. Um, real quick, we're gonna say we're gonna get back on Rich Homie because we got a conversation to have off of that. We be acting like we scared these young niggas. These are the chosen ones, bro. These kids are fearless, bro. I seen a video, two young niggas trying to get chased by the police. They wouldn't chase them. They started chasing the police, and the police were trying to get away. <laughs> these the soldiers we've been looking for. They don't give a fuck about nothing. Listen, we raised them. 2012 hit, and we got hit with all this knowledge. Natural hair movement, hidden colors drop. When hidden colors hit the streets, oh. when hidden colors hit the streets, niggas woke up. <laughs> niggas woke up. Niggas what? I've, my my eyes have seen the light. The third eye, boy. Third eye open. Niggas ain't even know they. Contact lens on it. <laughs> <laughs> niggas third eye was a cat eye. <laughs> Niggas third out with like the opening scene in the belly. <laughs> Standing, are you ready? ready? Are you ready? ready? Let's go, What's go, going on? Go. Niggas third go out. Go faster. Feel like That's in the air. And the whole number go round. What's going on? Where do you want it? Where do you want it? Hey, you can't come back. You banned. You can't come back. You can't come back. <laughs> Niggas said the third eye had a contact on it. <laughs> Niggas got decalcified overnight. Listen, bro. I'm going to have a serious conversation. When that hidden colors drop the street, hit the streets, I'm working at a warehouse making no money. Every day we go on break, we smoke our cigarettes, we talk bullshit. That hidden color hit the street. The girl in quality control, I was like, man, really fuck these crackers. I was like, nah, for real. Nah, for real. For real, though. We done circumnavigated the planet. Bro, they let us know about every aspect of human history where we had involvement. We was here from the beginning. Niggas was powered up. Now think about now think about this. When you was growing up, your parents was talking mess, family business, church, talking God. So subconsciously, we millennials, we got that little fear in us. We don't want to go against God, right? It, it hitting colors hit the streets. Niggas start questioning God. Niggas start questioning the country. Niggas start questioning what it really meant to be black. We start seeing greatness in ourselves. Niggas start calling each other kings and queens. Women did the big chop. It was real. Francis Chris Wilson. This is how we got introduced to Dr. Umar. That hidden colors hit the street. It was like the opposite of crack. It really did wake niggas up. But I but but think about this. My baby's my baby three years old. When that hit the street, he he finna be 13 now. Now think about the elder millennials who born in 86 who got like 16, 17 year olds now. What you in the house talking about? Fuck the government. Fuck the education system. I'm finna home, I'm finna get a homestead. I'm finna get off grid. I'm finna I'm finna buy black. You shop black. Everything is anti-establishment. We putting this in their heads. Fuck the police. Then Trayvon happened. And we really on some fuck the police shit. These young niggas don't care. They the chosen ones. We need to stop being scared of these young niggas and embrace them. 
These is warriors, bro. We, these kids with a warrior spirit, they don't fear shit. But if we fear them and criticize them, they all of that potential, this system that y'all always talking about fighting, they got the potential to fight it. They the ones. They are babies. Now we getting older and we we starting to we starting to lose some luster and we getting a little bit more practical when we play a little more safe because niggas because uh, niggas got charges. We just not making some money. We don't want to fuck it up. And what happens is you get around this age and then you start saying the same shit to your kids that your parents used to say to you. Let these young niggas be free because if we don't redirect that energy, I ain't gonna say I don't I ain't gonna say where we should redirect energy to because I don't want this to turn into some. Fred, Fred Hampton, Black Panther Party shit getting radical. Because th that's really what I want to do right now. I'm going to just say this. Farrakhan said it best. They're the most fearless generation we ever had. They're just misguided. That's what I'm saying. Now, I'm saying we... But if we scared of them, and we and we criticizing them, check them young nigga, man. Check them. But show them some love. Because if they, if they keep directing the energy at each other, it ain't going to be none of them left. We're going to miss it. <clears throat> we, You got to start embracing. When you see a group of five with shiesty mask on, them your people. Go embrace them. Don't be scared of them because if you're scared of them, think about what the rest of the world think. They already scared of us in general. That's your front line right there. That's your front line. And we ain't got to send them to go crash out over bullshit. Feed them young niggas, man. Show them niggas some love. They hungry for knowledge. They hungry for knowledge. Oh. If you're not going to stop and talk, because they already get it. The school ain't going to teach them shit. Look at what their parents going through. Their parents can't afford a home. Niggas out here on TikTok shop. Niggas out here trying to slang, hustle. Niggas trying to grind. Trying to get several streams of income because just having a job ain't enough. They taking Social Security. They trying to raise the raise the retirement age. These young niggas know. Ain't nothing for in, the, in this world. I ain't going to be no slave to this shit. Fun crash. And, and and it's not even about going to prison no more. They ain't shooting. They ain't killing over money. They would rather die. They don't give a fuck about dying. That's powerful. But you're looking at it under the scope of what the system is and how white people looking at them. You got to look at them as what they are. They warriors, bro. They just misguided. And this country ain't going to guide them nowhere. And they, they, and they know that. They not learning shit in school. They don't give a fuck. We say that now. Oh, school ain't. I ain't use none of this shit I learned in school. What we say now? Oh, ain't no point in going to college. You might as well go get a skilled trade. Go to the military. You owned by the government. Black people, come on now. We talk all this shit. These young niggas carrying it out. That wild energy, that warrior spirit, that fight the power shit, that's them. These the same young niggas that was burning up Detroit, burning up Watts. This the same energy. But they had knowledge. Who gonna give them the knowledge? Who gonna guide them? Who gonna show them some love? Who gonna stop criticizing them and acting like... They're menaces to society. They people, bro. These are babies, bro. Show the babies some love when you see them. The shiesty, hey. That's how influential the culture is. That's how influential young niggas is. One rapper got a whole baklava named after him. But they all misguided. Of course they on drugs. You on drugs. We on the, we on the, we on the gulla gulla right now. We on the gulla gulla right now. You go home smoking blunt every day, but guess what? When you don't feel like you got no future as a blunt enough, we thought we had a chance. When we were 16, we was like, shit, the rules seem simple. Shit, the game seemed fairly easy. And then we got out here and realized it's fixed. And then, as soon as we played the game and started winning, they changed the rules. Now we like, damn. Of course, and our baby's hearing us talk. Our babies hear us talk revolution. They don't see us act on it, but they hear us talk about it. Our babies hear us talk radical. We might not act on it, but they're hearing us talk about it. They're taking in all the information. You think the kids ain't listening, and they is. The shit you watched with your parents, your parents wasn't watching Hidden Colors. Your, that, your parents was watching Color Purple. Roots. Roots. And then you grow up, and you tired of that shit. You don't want to see none of that. You was watching Hidden Colors with your kids. Huh? I, I know I watch Hidden Colors. I was watching the move group about John Africa with my kids. I was watching <clears throat> I, I'm I, I didn't I wasn't purposely trying to radicalize them, but look at all the young niggas radicalized. With the but but the misguided energy. And we gotta guide the energy back to them. You gotta show them some love when you see them young niggas, man. I do. Um rest in peace, Rich Homie. Rest in peace, uh 
what with a YBC duel, young nigga from Philly. Philly. Young niggas, man. I mean, we can't condone we can't condone the energy playing with people playing on the dead and shit like that. But that's how that's how much they don't give a fuck. We never seen this shit before. You feel me? But that's somebody baby. Now, Rich Homie Kwan is not like a big what if. We got to see his career play out. You feel me? But there is like some what like think about like how drugs, drugs, gun violence, and incarceration have taken so many, so much potential out of this hip hop space. Um, and one name that popped in my mind is Pop Smoke. Colin, what he had a buzz is is com- severely understating, but he was nowhere near his peak. And he had, and he had so much. He had influence over in the UK. He had them London. He had London on fire. He had New York. New York had its own sound again. New York was. New York had a face. Pop Smoke was the face, bro. He was getting love in Cali. He was getting love down south. Bro was finna be a star. He was finna be mega. <sighs> You gangbanger niggas is lame when it comes to that shit, bro. I don't hear... Taylor Swift ain't never checked in. They be performing in your city. Why niggas can't live in your city, bro? Why niggas can't get successful, move to LA, and live in your city without getting extorted? That shit corny, bro. That shit corny. Then you niggas be 40, 50 telling niggas to check in. Niggas be up there with the white boy all day. The white boy be up there disrespecting you. Don't, you don't bang on him. You don't, I ain't seen nobody bang on Adam 22. Nobody bang on Justin Bieber. Nobody bang on Justin. Justin Bieber was in the hood. Y'all had him out here singing, showing love. Big Soldier came to the hood. Y'all tried to fight him. Y'all took Nipsey. Nipsey is one of the biggest what ifs in hip hop because what he was doing was bigger than music. And he was just getting started. That LA gang culture shit, that shit burnt out. That shit like selling crack. That shit burnt out. If y'all niggas not gonna be on some unity shit, like why is niggas checking it, bro? That's, you don't own shit over there, bro. I don't like to. I, I understand the circumstances. We talked about this several times on here. If we was in the same circumstances, we would be them same niggas. I'm, un, but, but let's, let's let's step back and see how is it. What has it done for the community? I don't want to hear that community revolution and progress shit. Brotherly love overrides oppressive destroy. I don't want to hear that shit because I ain't seeing it. And now niggas always got to check in. And niggas is dying when they come out there because they're not checking in because they're not letting niggas extort them. And, they, and you know, they saying Nipsey died. I ain't finna get into y'all gang politics, man. Soldier Slim. Mm. A big what if. A big what if. Head streets on fire, man. Listen, in a place like New Orleans, where they say if you survived 95 and you was outside, you was a gangster, certified. To have the respect of that city, and and Soldier had it. Soldier Slim had it. More than Master P, more than Birdman, more than anybody, the streets really respected Soldier Slim. It ain't no telling where he could have been, bro. It ain't no telling. I mean, he had his struggles with drugs and, and shit like that, but... He was so talented, bro. And he had the streets, though. That's another thing. He had the streets. For me, I would say when I'm 20, 21, 22 years old, I'm listening to Pro Era, Flatbush Zombies, that whole movement, right? Cool kids, all this and that. Big what if? Capital Steez. Mm. A real radical. The actual leader of Pro Era. Now, I, I understand what we say about Joey Badass, but if you was really tapped in, you know that all that, how they talk, their mindset, all of that came from Capital Steez. The progressive era comes from Capital Steez. The 47 shit comes from Capital Steez. It, it, it did turn out that he was diagnosed with schizophrenic, and then he did himself. And he and he, you know it was of his belief that he was gonna come back in the year 2047. Now we know that's not true, but the potential that he had, especially at the time, 2012. I'm telling you, bro, it's something about that 2012 year was special, bro. And we getting away from it, 
It, it, it and the further it goes, like like the thing is, Dr. Umar has been consistent with his message of Pan Africanism. But the further we get away from that 2012 energy, COVID really did a number on on the on the world, on the country. But I think that, I mean, Capital Steve was an amazing rapper, bro. Amazing, bro. I was going through some shit 2012. Like, I had just had my first kid. I'm trying to get out the streets. I'm working jobs. I ain't seeing the potential in it, but I'm still doing it. I'm driving to Atlanta every day. I'm I'm bucking, trying not to pay for for, for uh, trying not to pay for parking. <laughs> Motherfucking bus boy at Miko Cena in Midtown, listening to Black Petunia, nigga. Mm, the concrete roads turn into a black petunia. Y'all don't know nothing about Capital Steve's, nigga. Y'all know nothing about that. A lot of what ifs in hip hop. What's one more? What's another what if in hip hop? Camouflage. <sighs> they don't know nothing about. They don't know about camouflage. They don't know nothing about that. Shout out to Fly J, man. Yeah. yeah. Man. Who, who you got? I say um, the young kid that got all that time for. Uh, Tay K. Tay K. Fuck, fuck, fuck a beat. Tay K would have been big. That was tough. That was tough. Tay K would have been big. But only because he blew it because he did what the song said. Though. That the thing is. Yeah. Steve. But but if you go listen to his other music, shout it hard. Shout it hard. But I, I kind of feel like that about Tay K too. Like if he went on the run, he probably wouldn't have been that big. But we, that was But we we feed into that though. Yeah, but he actually was on the run and actually and actually got 55 years. <laughs> he did a video next to his wanted picture. That was picture like this the Westerns. Yeah, Tay K the original young nigga. He is. <laughs> he the original. He had it in the forefront. <laughs> Bruh, no. Because Okay, because now that he's doing some time, he see like, damn, bro. Really wildin'. Could have put this energy somewhere else. Could have put that energy somewhere King else. Bun. King Bun. King. Immaculate Storyteller. Headed to the top, bro. Immaculate had... Storyteller, bro. Real nigga. But actually a serial killer, so maybe not King Bun. I would call him a serial killer. You're a product of your environment. Yeah, your environment. If I put you, if I put you in misguided block, young nigga, man, misguided like, young nigga, man. If I put you in old block, bro, you'll be a different. I'm be dude. the same type of nigga. That's what we always talk about. If we grow up in them same circumstances, that's why it's like it's a double edged sword because you want to be empathetic towards your people, bro. Because you understand the systems and you understand the circumstances. That's the thing that I like about Dr. Umar. He understands the systems and circumstances, but he critical because when he say like when he said what he said about hip hop. Even though I'm a fan of hip hop and I love hip hop, in total, he's right. It's okay. enriched individuals. And it's very influential. And the message, the message ain't necessarily a positive one. But. It's our story, though. It is our story. It's our story, but there's other stories to tell. You're right. But NWA was NWA before the music. Compton was Compton. So was, was Public Trump. Enemy. This is what we got to see. No, see, I'm, now you're going to get me into my... No, now you're going to get me into my... Bad, now you're going to get me in my crazy bone bag no, about Compton how they colluded. How they colluded. Where these areas before the No, but listen, but listen. That's the thing about this this shit. It's so multifaceted because I agree with every side. But the thing is, is like... Okay, think about this, right? Hold on, wait a minute. I want to say this. All right, go ahead. Tookie Williams doing drive-bys to the Commodores. <laughs> Hip hop had nothing to do with that. Whoa, whoa, whoa zoom! Tookie was doing drive-bys to the Commodores. Listen, I don't blame. I don't blame hip hop, right? You can't because it's it's it's, it's morally environment. Um, and when you have people from your environment telling the story of your environment, it's just a soundtrack, right? But if you're going to do what you're going to do, you're going to do it to anything, right? Like, just like they tried to blame, like, Marilyn Manson, but for Columbine. You, and them niggas was, ain't no Marilyn Manson. Young nigga just, Colt Gray, just shot up a school. The thing is, is that. Colt oh, Gray, he was built for this. I'm, I'm done, son. You know what? You fucking know what, son. I'm sorry. Put that cup down, son. What are you talking about right Colt now? Colt Gray. He was built for this? What the fuck, son? That's <laughs> good for what? Some <laughs> school violence? <laughs> what the fuck? My son's name is Colt Gray. Son. What else can he do in society? <laughs> that nigga's a literal <laughs> son of a gun. <laughs>
Shader, you can't come back. Oh my god. Shader, you can't come back. Y'all say goodbye to Shader. <laughs> He's not coming back. He was built for this. He was, for built this. For this. <laughs> he was de destined to shoot up his <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Low key? I mean, he's right. No, but low key, because the FBI knew about him a year ago. Yeah. Listen. Oh, Dad got the charges. Come on, Dad. Hey. <laughs> hey. Come Shader. on, Dad. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Enough, son. Enough, bro. I'm gonna sit my kettle. Man, let me get some of that kettle. Let me get on. Let bro, me get on your level. Let me get on your level. Let me get on your level, son. We don't need no more kettle. Listen, um, <laughs> shout out to the state of Georgia for holding the parents accountable. Shout out to the... Give the daddy life, charge the son with domestic terrorism. Thanks. How... Okay, real question. This, real, this is a real question. How isn't a school shooting considered domestic terrorism? What is more terroristic than killing kids? It shouldn't have to be an airplane into a building. Conspiracy, premeditation, AR-15, that's terrorism, bro. If it, was a, if it was a foreign national that did it, and not just a member of the school, it would be terrorism. Oftentimes, we're, uh, oftentimes we don't talk about domestic terrorism because the true domestic terrorists are white men. And time and time again, white men shoot up schools and we start talking about their fucking mental health. We talk about, oh, his mama was on drugs. Fuck his mother. I hope she get back on drugs and a nigga give her fentanyl. Give her the good Fenty. Give her good Rihanna. What was the, what was the news? Uh, the news channel that posted the wrong kid. The news channel posted the victim. Man, you white folks be up to no good, bro. Crazy lawsuit, baby. I need that. And and but you posted it and, and and what was the point? What was the angle? The angle was to make it seem like he was the shooter. And he was the and he was the victim. Y'all showing pictures of Coke right when he's seven years old smiling and shit. And not that cold blooded fucking killer that we saw in court. I mean, I mean. Hitler would come in his pants if he seen that blonde hair, blue eye, crack baby ass nigga. Niggas a crack baby. Y'all ain't show. Y'all ain't. Y'all ain't never once talk about the mental health of black people after you flooded the neighborhoods with drugs and and turned their mothers into crackheads. Brian, you just said they was unfit parents. But when their children was outside killing each other, you ain't talk about their fucking mental health. You locked their ass up and you threw away the key. Drug and 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 and, and being addicted wasn't a disease. Now it's a disease. Oh, his mother was on. Fuck his mother. Fuck his daddy and fuck him. And fuck everybody like him. Fuck Winder, Georgia. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Um, Not a lot of blacks out there. My homeboy, shit, my homeboy fucking with that girl from Winder. Domestic violence. <laughs> Domestic violence got his black ass locked up. Ooh. Fucking with them white gals. Fucking with them snow bunnies. Talk to these niggas, Dr. Umar. Niggas like to ski. Niggas like to ski. So if it ain't snowing, I ain't going. I'll tell you where you are going. Prison. <laughs> Book him. Book him. My condolences out to the families of the children that died, to the families of the teachers that died, protecting those children. Charge fo I, I hope that nigga get t four life sentences and charge domestic terrorism. Put, the, put, the, put him on the island. Guantanamo Bay, baby. Put him on the island. What's up, baby? Him and his father. Put him and his daddy out there on the island. Florence ADX. Woo. Hmm? Florence ADX. Where they going? Feds. Feed them to the feds. 14 years old in the feds. 23 hour lockdown, nigga. Shoot program, nigga. Mm. Mm. Pine soul smell like that. Pine soul heaven, baby. That's where you go. Pine soul heaven. <laughs> Talk to him, Lonzo. Talk to these fuck niggas, Lonzo. Listen, when they start dying, they hair like the Joker. You gotta pay attention to them, son. Yeah, I'm sorry. If the FBI got you on a watch list, it ain't nothing. First of all, if you, if the FBI, if 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 this is my, this should, to me should be protocol. If I gotta visit you because you're suspected of making terroristic threats, we're taking you out of the public school system. Immediately. 
You should be taken out of the public. That's not even something you should want to gamble with. You should be taken out of the public school system. Homeschool this nigga. Then we're going to see how really unfit the parents are. Then, then make them a ward of the state. Coat Georgia. But do away with that great your last name. Georgia now. Oh, <laughs> fucking crackhead ass mama, man. Fuck that. Give a fuck about that bitch, man. Well, fit, bitch fuck, about, fuck about that milk smoking bitch. <laughs> oh, his mother was on drugs. Nigga. Yeah, I bet. His daddy in a crying in the courtroom. Oh, I don't have nothing to fucking white men. Charge! <laughs> you seen him in court crying? Yeah, I don't know about it. Yeah, yeah, sir. Nigga, fuck you, nigga. Fuck you, don't get shit from me. Yeah, don't get no sympathy from me, man. Fuck them niggas. I should be a judge. This week. Life. <laughs> he did what? Life. Put him in the chair. Y'all ready to go to lunch? <laughs> Y'all boy hungry? I was thinking wing stop. I got some gas. This is Life. preliminary hearing. <laughs> Life. Hey, we had the pre-trial. Born here. Life. <laughs> This shit easy. This shit hey, easy. Hey, what we wasting all this time for? That's a fact. Dude. We wasting all this time for. Nigga, it's nine. We can't. It's day. It's day. It's day. One twenty three of the YSL. Okay, just free thug. Free thug. The and state got nothing. All the rest of you guys. Hey, the nigga. Hey, Brian still and shaped it, man. Nick, oh. Nigga pulled out a picture of Anthony Davies doing the slime shit and a little white girl. He was like, are these people white as hell? Well, he's white. like, well, you know, he's a basketball player. Oh, okay. Shave across examining Woody. Listen, listen, listen. Woody. Time out, 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 time out. Speaking of crackhead moms, this week in that top five, top five, top five, we're going to do the top five trap rappers. Oh, all these mixtapes. <laughs> Have a holiday season <laughs> at number five. <laughs> Damn, son, where'd you find this? <laughs> Real trash Real shit. Trap shit. <laughs> Hold it. <laughs> Mr. Thanksgiving. Mr. Thanksgiving. <laughs> at number five. Cannon. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're not sorry. <laughs> We lived through that era, bro. It was beautiful. <laughs> Can I do the segment? No, man? do it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, son. Keep going, son. At number five, it's Ello. I got shot it low at number five, man. God bless you, son. At number four, Yo Gotti. At number three, first of all, let's talk about Yo Gotti cocaine music series. He got a whole series called Cocaine Music. Touchdown took me, bro. And I wanted a motherfucking, that white on white motherfucker so bad. And number three, Gucci Man. For sure. And number two, Young Jeezy. Trying to make it easy. Young Jeezy. And number one, the man who coined the term, Clifford Harris. <laughs> T.I. What you got, Big Cat? Swing the mic, son. You gotta hit me on this one. Big Cats, top five trappers, trap rappers. At number five, the great from Memphis himself. There you know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, young Dolph. You <laughs> already know. At number four, from Memphis again, Yo Gotti. It's your boy, Yo Gotti. At number three, Holiday oh, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's Gucci. It's <laughs> Burr, Burr, Burr. At number two, Mr. BMF himself, Young Jeezy. Young Jeezy. And at number one. Yeah. At number one. At number one, it's only one answer. He crowned the. He he coined the phrase. He coined the phrase. Ti, trap music. That's it, son. Ti. Listen, bro, we're going to get up out of here because Shaderic is wildin'. He, he's wildin'. <laughs> he's built for this. He's built he's for this. He's built for this. So well, before, before we get, we back. <laughs> we're back, baby. We're not bringing him back. 